This is my son. He's about a month old and he's surprisingly disciplined. He eats and poops every 2 hours, sleeps in the weirdest positions and is known to spray my face when I'm least expecting it. And he makes this non-human demon channeling face when being burped. So let me take you through our roller coaster ride of bringing this little blobbery blob of blubber to life. Now, getting pregnant is not always a straight single shot effort as most movies would have you believe. It can often be a grueling, stressful process. It involves a lot of being on a stick and not seeing results, but not giving up. Eating the right nuts, the right seeds, trying all the gravity-defying positions that Google tells you about. These two dogs are obviously not doing it right, but you know what I mean. So we did all those things and kept being on a stick and not seeing results. Not too proud of this, but even I tried being on the stick just to be really sure. Yep, doesn't work. But then one day with just the right amount of pee and HCG hormone, she came out of the restroom with a freshly peed on stick and a digital message that read one to two weeks pregnant. Obviously we checked multiple times to be sure. Yes, we were indeed pregnant. Oh, that was surreal. She had always wanted children, but that day she really knew that this will complete her. And then it begins. The hospital visits, lots of tests, a little more being in a cup, and then it's just a waiting game. So we started our prenatal vitamins and popping pills and stocking up. And yes, there are perks to getting pregnant. I was suddenly expected to care more, do more, pretty much be at her service. And I did, with all my heart and soul. She may have taken a little advantage of the situation, but still. And those services, unfortunately, were not reciprocated. I'll find some other time. Also, for the first time in her life, she could really let herself go and not worry about how many calories she was consuming. She could just bask in the aroma and the salty, spicy taste of all the food that she had been avoiding to stay in shape and good health. She could finally eat. And eat. And eat like a boss. And be proud of it. All is forgiven when you are carrying a human in your pouch. So, my dear lovely ladies, if you are pregnant, go ahead. Eat your hearts out. Eat whatever pastry you fancy. Eat all the steak you can get. Eat your husbands if you really need to. You are excused. Because pregnancy is a hard road. It's filled with unexpected emotions that bubble up randomly. And your body is going through some pretty intense manufacturing. That's why it gets very, very tiring and exhausting. You feel like you're slowly losing control of your sleep and your emotions. So, to get back in control, just like all first-time parents anxious about the uncertain ride ahead, we started taking classes. Stuff to do, stuff not to do, month by month, trimester by trimester. And just a tip ladies, take as many classes as you want but before you decide to watch birthing videos, just don't. They will terrify the spinal fluid out of you. We did and it certainly got us rethinking our decision. It is not pretty. Just stick to eating right, staying positive and not missing your appointments and you should be fine. It really doesn't get real until your first ultrasound where you see the little bouncy thing floating about and hear his heartbeat. There's actually a miniature human being inside me. This is what you feel. The tiny heartbeat, the tiny somersaults, tiny hiccups all made it real for us too. Pretty soon the belly starts to show up and for the first time in her life she's happy she's gaining weight, proud of the pouch and she loves to show it off too. Worth the weight, the W-E-I-G-H-T weight. Oh and pretty soon your old clothes will not be as kind as they used to be. Things will start to get stuck at body parts that you didn't have. So you'll need to go shopping, maternity section or just the extra large section. Now, my wife and I are not fond of surprises. We needed to know the gender. So we found out. 
Pregnancy is already a journey filled with uncertainties. So for us, knowing the gender allowed us to make arrangements and plans on a practical level. Thinking names, building the nursery, clothes for the baby, but mostly reduce the anxiety about the huge impending life change of having a baby. We were okay with the change, we just needed to know whether that change would be standing up or sitting down when they grow up. Hands out, standing up. Pretty soon, the second trimester or the honeymoon pregnancy phase, as it's commonly referred to, is over. The last leg of the journey is usually the most intense for most people. And there's not much you can do but ride the waves and hold your partner to let them know that you are here and that this too shall pass. Month 6 or 7 onward also means you will be uncomfortable. A lot. And often. No matter what positions you try to sit or lie down, that little monster inside just won't let up. Your organs are squeezed so tight that even breathing normally becomes a luxury. Everything hurts and you want to throw up all over and explode into a white light of oblivion and be free. But you can't. You have a life to bring forth. So you hold on and do whatever it takes to keep your mind entertained. For example, you can use your tummy as a plate holder or a cup holder or even a laptop stand. You'll figure out your own uses for your tummy. Baby movement will get pretty prominent by this time, so try not to miss those flutters or turnovers or rolls in your belly. But why do these idiots only move when you're not looking? But don't worry, eventually you'll catch it. And it's just, well, creepy as hell. Ever see the movie Alien? Now this is just traditional, baby shower. But we did it just to feel normal, unalone. Believe me, you can't possibly estimate how valuable having people that care for you is. Especially when you are far away from home and family. We knew how overwhelming it will get once the baby comes. So my wife planned all the baby's essentials ahead of time. Starting with sweater blankets, white noise machine, bassinet, baby bathtub, mom's nursing pads, baby thermometer, burp cloths, milk storage bags, mitten socks, beanies and onesies, baby towel, bottle warmer, changing pads, baby lotion, milk bottles, wipes, milk collectors for mom, electronic breast pumps for mom, my wife swears by these, she cannot recommend these enough, lots of pacifiers as per your preference, and diapers. Ah yes, lots and lots and lots of diapers. Trust me, you will never have enough. And then a cute little baby car to organize all that in and roll around the house. Oh, and almost forgot, diaper genie. Without this, now life has no meaning. Okay, that's right. Just breathe. Twenty more seconds.
another half push, another half push, lots of burning it. Thought. Okay, listen. Okay, big push, big push, big push. Look out! Look out, mama! Look, 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 People say all these things about how magical life with a newborn really is. Well, I got news for you, new parents. That's just not true. Life with a newborn, at least for us, is mostly about not getting sleep, being woken up from a screeching, bawling sound in the middle of the night every hour to change the diaper, to feed, to burp, and to put back to sleep. Then change the diaper again. Feed, burp, and then put back to sleep. Then wake up again in the middle of the night and do it all over. Remember I told you about diapers before? Sometimes I just use this diaper waste as a punching bag to relieve some stress of how much this little blob shits. Oh, and by the way, the stress of the newborn phase is no joke. It is so overwhelming, you're so overworked and so badly sleep deprived that sadness creeps in. A little bit of self-doubt about whether or not you'll be a good mother or father is also very real. Emotions do run high in this newborn phase and it's okay to feel angry and frustrated. It is okay to cry. Every parent feels this, but if it starts to feel like you're sinking, please reach out. There is help available. You owe it to yourself and your baby to treat yourself right because it will start all over again. So team up with your partner. Take turns holding the baby. Feed your partner while she puts the baby to sleep. Rock the baby while she cooks, then switch. Then you sleep while she watches the baby and then switch. Then doze off together if you get a chance. As long as you work as a team, you'll figure out your own system. Make no mistake, the newborn phase is quite a roller coaster ride. And everybody keeps telling us that it will pass. And we want to believe them. But it's hard, especially given the reality of our situation. But then we keep telling ourselves that it has to mean something as we watch our baby smile back and attempt to learn who we are and to watch him sneeze in succession while we revel in how tiny this human is and that one day this tiny human will be older, wiser, stronger, will be able to make friends, love, and have a personality. I just hope that one day when he's older and watching this video maybe on YouTube, it puts a smile to his face and lets him know that his mom and dad raised him well.